So there are a few things more frustrating in life, especially, you know, within the cosmetics making life world to make a whole bunch of bath bombs and then come in the next day and see that they've developed warts or they are growing out of their little containers that you put them in to dry out or that they're very fragile or that they have massive cracks along the top of them. That sucks. And troubleshooting them at that point, well, it's too late, isn't it? The bath bomb has already been made, but you thought that everything was completely fine while you were making the bomb. It molded appropriately. You had no problems with the actual consistency of the powder. So what gives? Well, we're going to talk about that today, and I will tell you more about all of that in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for week 26 of year three and video number four in the Back to Basics Bath Bomb playlist, which will consist of eight parts for sure. And today we are going to be talking about all of the problems that you get essentially after you've made your bomb. Because as I've said in these other earlier videos, having made as many bath bombs as I have over the years, I can essentially create a spherical bomb. Like I can make a bath bomb work out of almost any bath bomb powder consistency. Like I can just do that. But it doesn't really matter if the actual batch itself is faulty to begin with. And so once you get to that point of needing to troubleshoot a batch that has cracks or that is fragile, well, it's too late. You need to be troubleshooting it in the actual mixing stage. So that's what we're going to talk about today while also dealing with some colorants that you can put in for hidden color bath bombs. We will be using the FD&C colorants that we used in the second video that we mixed up. And I'm going to talk about a number of different ways that you can use them and what the benefits, the pros and the cons of each of those are, and then show you you know what happens essentially when you use overly wet bath bomb powder so you know that that's what it is if you ever run into bath bombs that look like mine so let's get to the video and we can talk all about that okay so troubleshooting bath bombs and since the name of the game for this entire playlist is uh, teaching you to crawl before you can walk so you can run we're going to troubleshoot the bath bombs at the place where it makes the most sense within the actual mix before you add the citric acid. So the moisture content is the name of the game with all of this. If a bath bomb mixture is too dry, the end result of the bath bomb, while you can still theoretically form it into a sphere or put it in a mold, it will be crumbly, it will be fragile, and it will essentially fail in shipping. If uh, the overall bath bomb mixture is too wet, it will develop warts, it can crack, it can take on too much moisture from the environment around it, and it will look unsightly. Knowing your bath bomb powder from this stage is very, very critical. It's very important. And now moisture content is a whole thing and you actually can measure that. And I think I'm going to be showing you that in maybe a bonus video of all of this. I haven't quite decided if I'm gonna do that members only or one for the channel because it's kind of weird, but you can actually measure the moisture content of your bath bomb powder. And uh, that will give you a good idea and an indication as to whether or not, you know, it's the right wetness, essentially. That's not something that's super needed though. You don't need to get that scientific because bath bomb making is not really scientific. It's not a precise science. I mean, obviously the chemical reaction between baking soda and citric acid this is a very basic chemical reaction and that's, you know, science. But the precision with which you make a bath bomb, there's a lot of factors and those factors do include, you know, the humidity of your environment 
as well as the moisture within your bath bombs themselves. And so learning how your bath bomb powder feels right now before you put the citric acid in is going to be a big important thing in order to ensure that you have really good bath bombs consistently 100% of the time. Now with this, I am creating bath bomb powder that is overly wet and I'm doing that to show you what it looks like at the end. I want to show you some cracked bombs. I want to show you some potential separation, all of the things. But if you are seeing at this stage that your bath bomb powder is a little bit too wet before you've put the citric acid in, there are a number of things that you can do. You can add more baking soda to the batch and dry it out. You can add cornstarch or arrowroot or kale and clay to the batch to dry it out. You can also add witch hazel. Now in the last video and last couple of videos, I actually talked about witch hazel. Witch hazel is not a good binder because, well, A, the pH is very, very similar to the citric acid. And so the citric acid itself is more readily dissolvable within the uh, witch hazel and water. So there's that. But two, it is an astringent. It is meant to dry things out. And so as a binder, if the whole goal is you want to create a nice crust around your bath bombs to ensure they're nice and firm, while sometimes it will work depending on your humidity levels in your environments, other times it won't. And because of that inconsistency, it is not a good thing to use as a binder, but it is a great thing to use as, you know, a drying agent for your bath bombs. Absolutely. So that's something to definitely keep in mind at this stage before you've put in the citric acid. If you notice that your actual bath bomb powder is too moist, put some witch hazel in before you've put that citric acid in. Mix it around. Let it sit for like 30 seconds and watch it dry out. It's totally a thing. Now, how do you know if it's too wet? Really, that's how you know. See, it's holding its shape a bit too much. If you can take this bath bomb powder and just kind of roll it up into like a golf ball sized, you know, ball in your hand at this stage before you put the citric acid in, it's a little bit too damp. You should definitely work on drying that out. Now, for drying it out for this particular recipe, because all this is is two cups baking soda, one cup citric acid that is now in, right? And uh, the one tablespoon of the scent, the one tablespoon of the oil, and one, well, a lot of water because we used the FD&C colorants that were dispersed in water. Uh, adding some dry ingredients like a cornstarch or an arrowroot or more baking soda up to about a half a cup or so would be a really good starting point to ensure that these bombs are dried out and also have extra benefits. Okay, so while we mold these overly wet bath bombs, let's talk about the benefits that can come from the dry ingredients that you can use to dry out some overly wet bath bomb powder before you start molding. And so the dry ingredients that you can put in, as I said, more baking soda. So that's great. That's part of the chemical reaction, baking soda, citric acid, and that will essentially slow down the fizz because there's more baking soda than is necessary for the actual reaction. Cool. Uh, arrowroot and cornstarch. Cornstarch seems to get a bad, bad rap because it's considered filler. Like that's what people say. And uh, technically, like chemically speaking, that is true. Everything outside of the baking soda and the citric acid is a filler in a bath bomb because baking soda and citric acid, when hit with water, it creates fizzy liftoff. So chemically, everything else is filler. So your essential oils, your fragrance oils, your butters, your nourishing oils, any sort of other dry ingredient that you put in it, it's all filler. I think it's probably important to not use filler as a bad connotation, like a bad thing, because the filler is where we get our awesomeness within our bath bomb products. That's how we change it from just a chemical reaction, just fizzy liftoff, to something that's nourishing for the skin, to something that's enjoyable or pretty or whatever. And so, yeah, technically filler, but a beneficial filler. And so for the dry ingredients like cornstarch and arrowroot powder and kale and clay, they actually serve two purposes. One, it's going to dry out an overly wet batch of bath bomb powder, which we have discussed. So that's good. Two, because of the drying effects of that, it's going to also kind of stave off the bath bombs themselves, absorbing too much moisture while they are firming up, while they are drying out in their spherical form. So definitely a good thing as far as that goes. 
arrowroot powder and cornstarch as far as applications on the skin both very similar you know skin soothing all of that jazz and so for a skin perspective almost identical uh kaylin clay it's similar as well uh Overall, cornstarch does have the heaviest weight. Uh, arrowroot and kaolin are almost identical as far as their particle size. So they're going to be very similar as far as the potential to weigh it down is going to be less. Cornstarch can weigh your balm down a little bit more, but it also is an easy option to put in if you are looking at you know overall drying out the bath bomb and ensuring it's not going to take on any amount of water, uh, not only during the initial, you know, 12 to 24 hours while it's drying out after you've molded the bath bombs but additionally while they're being stored now that's an important thing to keep in mind i have received so many bath bombs from people over the years where they probably thought these bath bombs were great when they first made them but because they don't have these fillers inside of them to make sure that the bar the bombs stay hard and stay firm they've taken on too much moisture and they can end up easily dentable and i think i will show you some of my bath bombs that i have done that do not contain either an arrowroot or a cornstarch or a kaolin clay that have also taken on too much moisture from the environment as well as ones that are several years old that are still rock hard so i will be showing you that at some point within this playlist too but yeah the dry ingredients do have benefits outside of just making sure that the bath bomb powder itself during the make is going to be easy to work with and you're not going to end up with bombs that have warts or that have sagged over their you know their cradles while they are drying because they're too heavy because they're too wet another benefit of putting in an arrowroot or a cornstarch or a kaolin clay is that because it is a filler within the chemical process it's slowing down the actual you know fizz of the bath bomb for the baking soda and the citric acid because there's something in there that that chemical reaction sort of has to contend with and work around. So it yields a bath bomb that actually lasts longer as far as the fizz goes. And so that is another benefit as far as end user and performance goes for sure. So the dry ingredients themselves, yeah, maybe filler, but good filler. This is something that is going to be a benefit for your end user as well as for your makeability and ensuring that you don't have an overly wet batch of bath bomb powder. Okay, now on to the reveal of these guys. And as I said, I intentionally worked with an overly damp batch of bath bomb powder in the middle to show you all of this. And so you can see at the seams, they are definitely cracking. We definitely have some cracks that are forming uh, along the, the seam, certainly where the bath bomb powder that was overly wet was, you know, placed, but along the tops of some of these bath bombs as well, as you can see there. And I also have some examples of them settling into their cradles. And so essentially they've created a, a weird impression on the bottom of the bath bombs that I don't really like, uh, all because that bath bomb powder in the middle, it's a little bit too damp. Uh, technically speaking, because the water was in this, uh, they're fine. They're going to survive shipping. The fizzy liftoff is still going to be great. And I'm not at all concerned about it taking on extra moisture or whatever during, you know, storage. See there with the weird indent? Yeah, I don't like that. That's not fun for me. While I'm not worried about like the storage and them taking on extra moisture and getting soft or getting crumbly or whatever, they are unsightly. And so for me, I'm just not a fan of that generally. And I would prefer to be working with a bath bomb mixture that is drier, certainly, but not so dry that we're going to end up with you know, bath bombs that are crumbling and whatever right out of the gate. I've already shown you multiple examples of them being crumbly in the first few videos. So we're not going to continue to, you know, go through that. But this particular thing with painting the, the stuff on top, I am just still using these FDNC colorants that I bloomed in water. There's nothing else in them. I would never normally do this. This is not how I paint my bombs. Usually I use a slurry with micas and glycerin and a little bit of rubbing alcohol. The rubbing alcohol, again, it's drying like the witch hazel. So it's going to 
impede the ability of the fizzy that you're going to see with just using a water on top of an already formed bomb or, you know, a bath bomb that already has citric acid in it at any stage. But I want to make sure that we know what we're looking at and working with for all of the tests that we're going to do. And since so many of these are white, I just want to make sure that we are aware, you know, that this is a, the bomb that had the extra moisture inside. But you can see, but just using water on that, yeah, see how it bubbles? That's not fun. And that will continue to bubble until it runs out of baking soda and citric acid to interact with. And then it will stop and it'll end up really weird and dry looking and so not a lot of fun. But if you're going to be painting colors on, again, I do recommend using, you know, glycerin and rubbing alcohol as a slurry. Uh, the viscosity will help. That's what the glycerin is for, good viscosity. And the rubbing alcohol, again, to ensure that it's not getting all bubbly and strange like that. It dries out that chemical reaction as quickly as possible. So there's that. Again, this is just, this is just so we know what the, all the bombs are when we go to test them. So yeah, uh, overall, wet bath bomb batches, they are not a lot of fun. In both cases, overly dry or overly wet bath bomb powder when you are working. Instances come with headaches when you're trying to mold the bath bombs, certainly, and heartaches the next day when you walk in, something that you manage to get into a spherical form has problems. And so really getting, again, this is the crawling stage and learning what the bath bomb ratio should be, what the moisture content should be within your bath bomb powder. Getting to know that before you move on to the molding stage is going to really get you consistent bath bomb results 100% of the time. And that's when you can start walking and that's when you can start running. And that's when we start doing tips about how to make your bath bombs float or spin or do all the cool stuff. Because none of those things are going to work until you understand the actual moisture content and the importance of that in the actual mix of the bath bomb before you start molding. And yeah, my counter has just, it's going through it throughout this series, you know? And there it is. As you can see, a lot of cracking going on at the top of those bombs, as well as the seams. Structurally, they're fine. The integrity is fine. It's going to be able to ship. The fizz is still going to be great. I'm not at all worried about these bath bombs sitting out in open air and getting soft or fragile or drying out and losing their potency because the crust has been formed. Everything is good, but that crack, it's unsightly. It's not a good aesthetic. And so in order to eliminate those, yeah, you're dealing with an overly wet batch of bath bomb powder. So my recommendations would be adding a little bit of witch hazel, adding a little bit of rubbing alcohol, or adding some of your dry ingredients, be it a cornstarch, an arrowroot powder, a kale and clay, more baking soda. All of these things will help dry out your bath bomb batch so you don't end up with that. Again, a good rule of thumb, as I've been showing you in the video, if you can just kind of clump it and it stays kind of together in two or three pretty big clumps, if you start bouncing it around, it mostly stays intact. But if you can take your bath bomb powder and just easily roll it up into like a golf ball size, you know, shape, sphere, it's probably too wet. You probably need to dry it out a little bit before you put the citric acid in, before you put, before you start molding. So there's that. For the rest of this video series, we will be more into the walking phase. And so we are going to be talking about substitutions instead of water. We are going to be talking about extra add-ons in your bath bombs to prolong the fizz, to make the fizz more impactful, to color the bombs in different ways if you're not interested in using FD&Cs, to create foam or extra bubbles, all of the things. We're going to get into the walking stage, but these four videos should give you a lot of really good examples of what to look for when things are going wrong. And I apologize, I was unable to get any sort of warts or expanding bath bombs because I don't experience that anymore. That's not something that happens and I couldn't make, I couldn't force any of that to occur with all of these. But you know, maybe in the ones following this, we'll be able to do that. If you're interested in seeing if we are able to do that and how to troubleshoot all of those, although I've already told you how to do that, you know, subscribe, like the video, all of the things, comment below for sure. If there's anything that you specifically want me to focus on, since we are doing this in real time, definitely leave the comments below and I can make sure to address it in an upcoming video. Thank you so much for being here, for joining me, I'm speaking directly to the Sudzers right now. You guys are amazing. Thank you. I'm gonna go. Um, 
I filmed all four of these videos at the exact same time, and I successfully managed to get through without losing my voice, but I'm starting to get that tickle, you know, right back there. It's not fun for me, so I'm going to go get some tea. But I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of uh, Back to Basics Bath Bomb Playlist. Soapy, bath bomby fun. Bye. Yeah, I love how I don't want anyone to see my neck and then I just like point it out. Look, look at it, look at it.